Earlier this year, my daughter and I were going to put a new radio in her car. No big deal, right? And I knew we'd have to pull out the dash at least a little bit. And in researching, I found that the little plastic speaker grill on top, well, it just needed to pop right out so we could get to some of those screws underneath it. Well, that speaker cover nearly broke me. Or at least until I actually broke it. No, not just broke. It sort of shattered. I'm pretty sure it's ABS as well. We sort of just let the radio go at that point, and I thought, hey, I can 3D print that. You know you thought it. Well, no, it makes perfect sense. Well, it's now months later, and I've made some versions in Fusion 360 and printed a few out and still haven't quite gotten it right. Of course, it doesn't help that she's in college a few hours away. What I really needed was to have some uninterrupted time with that car to measure and test, you know, stuff like that. Or maybe I could just 3D scan it instead. I've tried some of the cell phone apps, as you've probably seen on a previous video, but they don't always work the best or the easiest or at all. So I've been looking around for some dedicated handheld 3D scanners. And man, they're all really different. Not just how they look, but how they work, what they're good at, and what they're good for, and then prices. Well, I've had my eyes on Creality's line of scanners for a while, and a while back they asked me to take a look at the new upgraded Pro version of the CR Scan Ferret. Well, it came out in 2023, but the new Pro package, that came out earlier this year, and they wanted to know what I might think about it. As you probably know, I don't mind checking out products as long as I can give my own unbiased review. And, of course, they said that was fine. And just like that, I had the ferret scanner to check out. I know it's not always indicative of quality, but when I get something that's relatively expensive and somewhat fragile, I want to get packaging that makes me feel like they care about my money as much as I do. And honestly, this case is fantastic. Taking everything out of the case, there's a lot to go through. There's a thick manual, and that's always good, especially when you haven't used this type of product before. Next, the holder for your cell phone that attaches to one of the biggest upgrades in this Pro version. And that's the handle that holds everything together. It's also a power bank that keeps everything charged without needing to be plugged in. And this should come in handy when scanning outside. Then there's a camera adapter that connects the scanner to the power bank handle and the tripod attachment that'll go on the bottom of the handle. Wrapped up nice and tight are the two main pieces we want to get all of this going. First, the new wireless bridge. That allows the scanner to connect to your Android or iPhone or your Mac or your PC, and it uses this all-new Wi-Fi 6 wireless connectivity. And then, of course, there's the Creality CR Scan Ferret Scanner itself. Creality says that this ferret scanner has a 0.1 millimeter accuracy, anti-shake 3D imaging technology, 24-bit full-color scanning, and can now scan non-reflective black or metal objects without needing any scanning spray. And you know all of that probably needs to be tested. Inside that side pocket there on the top lid, there's a few cables and attachments and, well, a few more cables and... Well, that's a lot of cables. <laughs> Thankfully, each one of the little bags for each cable has a label, so I won't be wondering what each one does. Some tracking stickers are always good to have. Looks like there's at least a couple of sheets. Putting all of this together was pretty straightforward, but I will say the instruction manual could have been a little more helpful. <laughs> Fortunately, it's not that difficult to figure out. It's extremely helpful that every cable bag, like I said, has that label and a drawing, and well, it just all fits together. The power base is probably the best way to start along with adding on that tripod. The camera mount faces you on the side with the buttons, and then the bridge goes right in front of that. There's a camera ball head that slides in on top of the camera mount, and then the camera just slides into that ball mount. Once you got it all together, getting everything connected and running, well, it's just as easy as putting it all together. You'll need to download software for your computer and an app for your phone. Starting out on the computer, you'll immediately get an update check and then some tips. I recommend reading through all of those tips, especially if you've never used a scanner like this one. And there you'll find tips on what to scan and what not to scan, more tips on best scanning practices, and even some troubleshooting steps along with QR codes and links to web pages with more information. 
Connecting with the USB cable, they do recommend connecting to the back of the computer for best power and connectivity. The power bank handle doesn't need to be turned on when using the cable, but I think it is worthwhile to keep it on there just to hold it steady. Even though the USB cable is pretty long, if you're using a desktop PC, you'll probably want to invest in a USB extension cable, and I'll have an Amazon affiliate link in the description to the one that I got. With Wi-Fi, it uses Wi-Fi 6 for the best connectivity, but on the computer I was using when I got the Ferret, that wasn't an option. It did connect though, eventually. I had to do some testing and found it was necessary to turn off my PC's Wi-Fi, turn on the bridge on the Ferret scanner, and then turn my PC Wi-Fi back on, and then it would find it and work just fine. Well, all that said, the Wi-Fi works, but it's okay. I had a good bit of pausing and backtracking, which could just be that I wasn't on Wi-Fi 6, except I had the same problem with my cell phone, which does have Wi-Fi 6. Connecting to a smartphone, well, it goes pretty much exactly like connecting to a computer. The better way to connect, again, just like the computer, is to use that included USB-C data cable. It's a really simple connection, and just make sure you accept the prompt on your phone. I still think probably the PC USB connection that's the best option, but when you're away from the PC, that USB-C cable is really the way to go. Using the included cable also gives you access to the power bank built into the handle. And the app, just like the PC program, well, it just works the way you expect, at least getting started. When it comes to scanning, there are a few things that I think you should note about the Ferret scanner. First, on the app, there's a few slightly confusing things. Whoa, well, that was for both. It's probably fine. Like when you move your phone to just the right spot to scan, it tells you, perfect, hold on. Do I wait for something, hold on? And that never goes away, but you just keep on scanning. I do like that the settings are all showing right there at the bottom of the screen so you know what you already have pre-selected. And there's even a helpful up arrow carrot so you can know that this is where to change those settings. But you can't slide that menu up like most apps. I spent way too long trying to do that. Instead, just tap anywhere on the settings bar to open it up. And the same goes for closing it up. It doesn't slide with your finger, you have to tap that down arrow. Also, the phone app and the PC have settings to select an object size and then a face or a body. Now, I did watch some other creators online and a number of them would make choices in both of those settings. But in going through it over and over and over again, I did find that those settings actually kind of cancel each one out. You choose one or the other. So if you select small, medium, or large, but then select body or face, that size selecting, it's no longer selected. And it's just something I wanted to point out so you don't get confused. Honestly, I think all five of these settings should just be under one drop-down. One of the main reasons I've wanted a scanner is to scan in some smaller items, and that's really where I ran into my biggest problem, scanning with the ferret. And I'll say right here, I'm at fault. I really didn't look too close at all those sizes and just assumed I could scan anything. Yeah, again, my fault. <laughs> Once I figured that out, I was able to get some decent scans and have fun. Maybe if they put the sizes, you know, in the settings next to the object size. Oh, wait, yeah. Well, they actually did that. How messed up was that? <laughs> so messed up. One last note about scanning into your phone. I highly recommend that when you finish your scan, just back out to the home page and send that scan over to your PC with that supplied QR code. It's really extremely simple to do. Your PC will calculate much faster and you could possibly even get better results. Drew Barry more power. Now with all of that, here's my seven top tips that I think are gonna help you and me, if I remember them, get the best scanning results using the Ferret Scanner. Number one, lighting. You need really good bright lights, but not too bright. The better the scanner can pick up dark spots or shadows, well, the better your scan's gonna look. Number two, a manual Lazy Susan. You know, that rotating table. Don't waste time or money on one that's motorized. You're gonna need to be able to reverse to a previous spot in case that scanning doesn't go quite exactly the way you want it to. Number three is tracking dots, and these are a must-have. You can put them on the table or even on the item if you need to. 
or you can 3D print some of those triangles or other tracking devices. You can find those on the online databases. I'll have some in the description down below. Number four, make sure you check your settings and try different settings. See what works best. You may find that using face or body on an object works better than the other and vice versa. Try out texture and geometry as well. You never know what could work better. Number five, use the cables when possible. At least in my experience, I prefer the quality and the tracking of using the cables over that Wi-Fi connection. And to go along with that, number six is process on the computer. If you do your scan on the phone, well, just send it over to the PC. It just makes sense that you'll get quicker and better results with more power. And last, definitely not least, number seven, go slow. Even using the fast option, you can always go too fast for the scanner to pick things up properly. Find a good speed and stick with it. After using it for a time, at least I found that you'll naturally know what works best. So what do I think about the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro 3D Scanner after I've used it for a while? Well, I like it a lot. Is it for you though? Maybe. I do know that it took me longer than I expected to really get comfortable with using it. And I think a lot of that is, once again, on me. I do know that I'm going to keep playing with it and scanning whatever I can, either just because or to 3D print it. And it just boils down to the fact that it's fun, especially with this scanner having the capability to show you a high resolution picture along with your scan. Well, that's just really cool. And that's why we keep doing anything, right? Because it's fun and cool. Hopefully I helped you out if you're looking for a 3D scanner. So keep 3D printing and 3D scanning and having fun as we all learn, create, and amaze.